So moving forward uh, with the uh, working capital management decisions that we have, as mentioned, there, there are four. What is operating cycle? I believe we have already uh, we have already discussed this on financial statement analysis, but in the in working capital management, uh, operating cycle plays an important role as well because operating cycle is the time from the beginning of the production process to collection of cash from the sale of the finished product. So this uh, this represents from the time that the production began up to the so from uh, from making it up to up to generating the cash from the said product that is essential to be determined in an organization so that you would know how long it takes for you to uh, disburse that cash and then get that cash back again and put it back in your operations actually that is cash conversion cycle the uh, shortest of the two because assuming you will actually you will actually transact with your suppliers and uh, have payables to them, um, the cash conversion cycle is the length of time required for a company to convert its cash invested back to cash and then put it back to the operations. So it is necessary to know that so that you would know when do you expect your cash to be back so that you will know how much cash should you maintain in your, in your company or in your box. So, operating cycle is equal to average age of inventory plus average collection period. That is the time when, uh, when inventory is available up to the time that, uh, that the amount is collected from the customer. But when we deduct average age of payables here, you would have cash conversion cycle. So let's answer a problem on this note. If the average age of inventory is 60 days, the average, so we have average age of inventory, 60 days. Then we have the average age of accounts payable to be how much? Average age of payables uh, 30 days then we have average age of accounts receivable or the average collection period of 45 days how what is your cash conversion cycle actually we can solve for the operating cycle here what is your operating cycle that is average age of inventory plus average age of receivables that is 60 plus 45 so your operating cycle is 105 days so your cash conversion cycle would be operating cycle minus the average average age of payables so that is 105 minus 30 days or simply 75 days so that is your cash conversion cycle so once you let go of that cash you would mm, expect it to be back in its uh, cash form <laughs> in 75 days so you can expect to have that money again and use it for other uh, operating purposes float so now we go to float what is float Float, uh, float would represent funds that have been sent by the payer but are not yet usable funds to the payee. So float actually has three component parts. That is mail float. So that is the delay when payment is sent uh, until it is received. So processing float would be the time between the receipt of payment and its deposit to the firm's account and clearing float the time when the amount is actually deposited until it is cleared from the bank. Why do we need to uh, examine or see, take a look at these float amounts? Uh, it is necessary for us to manage the float because uh, when we use float wisely, meaning 
Uh, for example, clearing float. Uh, you have already issued the check to the to the supplier. Then the check is be, is deposited by the supplier. If it takes three days for the bank to clear that uh, that check, it means uh, after three days, that is the day when the bank will check your bank account to determine if you have sufficient funds to uh, to fund that check to finance that check meaning if for example you you wrote a check amounting to 100,000 uh, today and it will be cleared three days after from the date today up to the last day of the clearing if you do not have that 100,000 pesos in your bank account that is okay it means you can use that 100,000 elsewhere and then on the third day you must have that 100,000 pesos on your bank account so, so that once the bank checks the uh, the one hundred thousand, whether it's there ready to be encashed by the uh, by the person to whom you issued your check, it would be it would be given to them. So that is uh, the uh, the significance of uh, identifying float for a business. So let's answer this problem assume that each day a company writes and receives checks totaling 10,000 if it takes five days for the checks to clear and be deducted from the company's account and only four days for deposit to clear what is the float so in here uh, you have your uh, clearing float which is five days. So clearing is five days while uh, deposit, uh, that, that is uh, issue, issue once clearing, while deposit clearing, meaning uh, if you deposit today, it will be reflected only after four days. Therefore, you have a one day of net float, meaning if you issued a check today, you can fund it tomorrow and still it will be cleared. So in a year, how much would this one day of float uh, be equal to? That is one day times the daily, uh, daily disbursement and receipts of 10,000. So that would be your that would be your amount of float in pesos 10,000 pesos so you can use this you can use this uh, amount to uh, to fund uh, to fund your to fund anything in a year so since uh, you can put out 10,000 of your daily uh, daily working capital of your working capital requirements since it has a float amounting to uh, the company has a float amounting to 10,000 pesos now we move to funding requirements so a company has uh, working capital requirements or needs funding needs uh, we have two types of needs, the permanent funding requirement and seasonal funding requirement. When we say that a funding requirement is permanent, it is a constant investment in operating assets resulting from constant sales over time. So we always need this amount uh, to be present because it is always in use by the company as part of the working capital. But when we say that a funding requirement is seasonal, it is a result of fluctuations in demands and funding requirements in an organization so uh, for example we have too many sales during december we need to expand our working capital so that we will be able to uh, finance those uh, needs of the organization how do we finance this uh, funding requirements we have two we have the aggressive funding strategy. When we say that the funding strategy is aggressive, we finance our seasonal requirements with short-term debt. 
while permanent requirements are financed with long-term debt. So, the aggressive and conservative funding strategy are similar in treatment when it comes to when it comes to uh, long-term debt, which is to finance them using long-term debt. While for short-term debt, that is where they differ, aggressive funding assumes that uh, you will be able to pay your seasonal funding requirements as soon as the season ends or as, as you go along your operation. So you fund them with short-term uh, short-term debt, while in conservative funding strategy, you fund your seasonal and permanent funding requirements with long-term debt. So, how does that work? Uh, you would have the funds av available always. So, let's answer a problem in here. So, Irish Air Services has determined the factors uh, relative to its asset and financing mix. So, the firm's monthly current fix and total asset requirements for the previous year are summarized in the table below. We have this table. So, the question is, what is the firm's monthly average permanent funding requirement? So, when we say uh, monthly permanent funding requirement, that is the minimum amount that you need in a given month for the company. So actually, uh, looking at the uh, table that we have, that is uh, the total assets under the total asset section, we see that the lowest amount that we require in a month is 140,000. So that is your permanent funding requirement. So uh, you need at least 140,000 in any given month and the rest would be uh, would be seasonal so what is your average seasonal funds requirement <clears throat> so we have the month of january february march april may june july august september October, November, hope it fits, so up to December. So the total, the asset requirement here, the total asset requirement is 145,000 and the permanent fund requirement is 140,000. So your seasonal your seasonal requirement here would be deduct them that is 5000 so the permanent funding requirement will be similar up until december now we have 140 for feb so our seasonal funding requirement for february is none then for march that is 150 so our seasonal funding requirement 150 minus 140 that is 10000 then for April, that is 155,000 minus 140. We have 15,000. And then we have 160,000 for May. So that would be minus 140. That is 20,000. And then for June, that is 175,000. That is similar for July and August. So at each you would require 175 minus 140 that is 35,000. Then for September that is 160,000 again. So that is 20,000. Then for October that is 155,000 again. So you would need 15,000 and for November and December that is 150 so that is 10,000 each so you would get the total of this that is 5,000 
5,000 plus 0 plus 10,000 plus 15,000 plus 20,000 plus 35,000 plus 35,000 plus 35,000 plus 20,000 plus 15,000 plus 10,000 plus 10,000 and then that would be 210,000 so 210,000 divided by 12 months that is 210,000 divided by 12 months 17,500 so this is your average seasonal funding requirement so this would be used uh, moving forward in our calculations